Welcome back to another Microsoft Azure tutorial. All right, so today we are going to continue discussing Azure functions, but we are now going to shift gears and we're no longer going to be talking about the HTTP trigger functions. Instead, we're going to segue into timer based functions. So uh, functions that are based on a trigger that is related to time. So in this particular video, what we're going to be doing is basically giving an overview about what we want to achieve, about being able to do some things like collecting data, uh, defining our project inside of Visual Studio Code more than likely, and also highlighting some other services that we're going to be using inside of Microsoft Azure. We might get into some coding. I, I don't know. It depends how long everything takes, but I would expect this series to range anywhere from three to four videos long. The only reason why is we're going to be showing you a lot of different stuff. So be ready. I do like this, though. I think it's going to give uh, some just different uh, perspectives, but then at the same time, just giving you examples to play with. And then ideally, if you want to do your own little project, you can kind of build off of some of the stuff I've been writing. OK, so what is the goal of this video? The whole purpose is that I have a bunch of RSS feeds from Microsoft, uh, basically Microsoft in general, but they basically have a blog and they make articles in that blog available through an RSS feed. Now, these are all the different blogs and boards and everything like that. And there's a few, there's like 60. So there's 60 different boards and they're constantly adding to it. And each one of these boards have information and articles related to a particular service inside of Microsoft Azure. So you can see right here, <clears throat> um, this is the Azure Data Factory. And if you go to this link, bear with me as it opens up. Uh, yeah, you can skip the verification. Uh, it will redirect you to this particular services blog. And so what we can do is if we want, we can actually go to these blogs and download uh, different articles based on what they're posting. So this is probably not the best example of it. Um, normally, it would look more like this, but you can see there's different articles that are on this one. And the idea behind it is we're going to create a function that will navigate to this RSS feed version of it, parse each one of these particular articles, store them in a JSON structure. We're then going to write that JSON data to an Azure blob storage account. So something like on here when you go onto your Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. So the goal is to write that content to a JSON a document inside of our Azure blob storage. And then we're going to want to be able to read that content directly in from Excel. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a connection to that blob storage account using Power Query. And then we're going to load that. And then we're going to put it on a very fast timer. So we're going to do it like where it pulls every 20 seconds. Now, normally, you don't need to pull even remotely that often for something like uh, this particular RSS feed. But the idea is I want to show you what it would look like when it comes to having that data dynamically come in. So lots of good information in here. We're going to be talking about multiple services, talking about Key Vault. We're going to be talking about Azure Blob Storage Connections. We're going to be talking about oh, default identity credentials. We're going to be talking about Power Query. So there's a lot of good content in this series. So that's basically what we have planned for it. OK, so first things first, let's open up Visual Studio Code. Once we've opened up Visual Studio Code, we're going to create a new Azure Function app project, and then we're going to start writing some of the code ideally. So first things first, let's open up Microsoft Visual Studio Code. So we're just going to do a new window right here. And I did want to remind most of you who are new to the channel, if you are new to the channel, um, please consider subscribing to Sigma Coding because I am constantly adding new content and stuff like that. So if you want to stay up to date with that new content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And then if you want, you can turn on that little notification bell. And from there, you can actually uh, get little notifications every time I post, which can be quite frequently. <laughs> OK, so the first thing is I'm going to create a new folder. 
Oh, we'll just follow our little trend from the previous series on functions and we'll just call this one video timer trigger true. Okay, and then we'll select that folder. Uh, once we're here, uh, as I mentioned in the pre previous Azure function series, there are quite a few extensions that you might want to install. So one is obviously Azure Functions. Um, if you already have that installed, that's important um, because it's just going to make integrating with your Azure services through VS Code a lot easier. You do want to make sure that you're signed into your account. So if you're like me, you might have multiple accounts, you might have a work account, you might have personal accounts, you might have accounts that you're joined with when you're working with clients or something like that. So there could be potentially many different accounts. You want to make sure you're connected to the account that you want to put the service on. It's very important you're on the right account because you're going to be billed for the service you're using. So obviously you don't want somebody to be charged for a service they didn't ask for. So you be very careful to make sure you're on the account you're supposed to be. Okay, and then at the top, or maybe somewhere down here or wherever, depending on if you've organized it differently, you see it should see a section that is related to functions. Below that, you're going to see your subscription pay as you go in my case. Yours could be named very differently depending on what you named your subscription. And if you expand the subscription, you'll see all the ones that you have currently hosted on Microsoft Azure. So these are ones that are all currently hosted on Microsoft Azure. However, we're going to create a new local project with the expectation that we will then move it over to Microsoft Azure once we validated that it's working locally. So if you want to create a new local project, if you hover over the folder, you have create new project. If you click this button, it's going to prompt you where do you want this function to live basically locally. Um, I'm okay with it being in the folder that I'm currently in. I created it for that specific reason. And then you need to select the language that you're going to be using for this function. We've been using Python, so we're going to continue to use Python. If you do select Python, you need to select your interpreter. It's very important that you remember if you want to use Python with Microsoft Azure functions, you must have a 64-bit version. You cannot have 32-bit. It does not currently work at the time of recording this video. It does not currently work with 32-bit. It might come in the future, but right now it's 64-bit. So I'm going to select that one. And then, as I mentioned in the previous video, you have lots, oops, lots, lots of different templates. In this situation, we don't want HTTP trigger. We want a timer trigger. So now you can give your function a name, your function app a name. We will call it ooh, Sigma RSS feed. We'll give that. Now here comes the fun part. So now we're talking about triggers, right? We're talking about triggers that are gonna be happening on a certain cadence. So there is expressions that we can use to basically specify how frequently or how or when we want this trigger to be, I'm sorry, when we want this function to be triggered. It uses something called cron, or at least I call it cron. And so it's a format that if you follow it, it will define when your function is supposed to run. So there's six different placeholders. There's seconds, minutes, hours, days, month, day of week. Yeah, that's six. <laughs> I thought for a second that was seven. And so we can change each of these placeholders to reflect when we want it to run. What this is saying is that you want it to run every five minutes, every five minutes. Now, cron does take a little bit of time to get used to. And if you're like me, you're never going to remember it. And so you just now you basically bookmark a site that will show you what it is. I found a site online. I will share it with you guys in the comments. It just for me, it makes a lot more sense. So they tr basically give you a little uh, way of typing it in and seeing what that would look like. So they also do a good job of trying to give you an idea of what each of the special characters mean. So any value is denoted by your asterisk, um, comma, if you want to do it on uh, multiple valueless separators, you can have a range of values and a step value. So this one right now is at every fifth minute past 
every hour from four through eight. So every fifth minute from the hours of four to eight, then run this. So let's just imagine for a second that I wanted to run this, I don't know, every 10 seconds, right? So right now, nothing's happening, right? So we need to do, um, what is it? Zero and then 10. Oh, sorry, then this one. So this one is, let me see if I have it right here as I'm already forgetting. <laughs> Mm, okay, here we go. Let me try this one again. As you can see, I'm already doing so well with this. So for example, I want uh, any value between fifth and then this and then this, and then this, and then this. So that this is every fifth minute, this is every 10th minute, uh, this is every hour, every four hour, um, I can say every day of the month, every second day of the month, um, every 20th day of the month, um, every second month, and then I can even do on every day of the week, every second day of the week, fourth day of the week, and so on and so on. So this one only goes to minutes, but uh, technically you can go uh, even seconds in the Azure function. So again, imagine I want every five seconds, right? Well, what if I want it to run every fifth minute and every 10th minute, right? So then I'm gonna do a comma, and then I'll say every 10. So this one saying every fifth minute, comma, and then every 10th minute as well. Um, and then I can even add here and say, hey, I want every fifth minute and every 10th minute for every hour. So it's it can get very complicated very quickly depending on what you want it to do. Um, you can also, um, I think this one is 20. So I think this one you can say, every fifth through 20 minutes. So every fifth through 20 minutes, um, you need to run as well. So that's if you want a range of values, um, you can have any value and stuff like that. I don't think that one would work. You could do something like this. So every 20 minutes. So there's different ways to do it, obviously, right? So I'm going to do something very specific. I'm, I'm doing this very specifically. So bear with me. Um, instead, what I'm going to say is every uh, 10 seconds. So we'll actually make it a little bit longer. We'll say every 20 seconds. Again, I would never expect to actually run this function literally every 20 seconds. The articles aren't changing that quickly. I mean, ideally, I would probably do this once a day, maybe. So keep this in mind. This is really just for demonstration purposes. Um, I just want it to where you can see the changes happen frequently. So you can see that the function's working. But keep in mind that, generally speaking, you want to run it only as much as you need to, because again, you're going to be billed, obviously, as frequently as you're running it. And depending on how complex it is, it, you can start racking up some charges. So this is going to run every 20 seconds. OK, and so um, it's going to start going through it. It's going to say, do you want to create your virtual environment? I say yes, because it's in here. And you can see that it's starting to generate a lot of output inside of our folder now. And uh, kind of like in the last video, we'll just briefly go over some of the functions, files, um, not a ton, only because we've already covered a lot of them. But again, you have your host file, you have your local settings, and then in the same time, you have your proxy. So these, again, we don't really touch these for the most part. Requirements file, we're actually going to be adding an awful lot to this very shortly because we're going to be utilizing so many Azure services. We want to make sure that we have those packages installed in our virtual environment. Func ignore, this is basically like the git ignore, but for functions. And then you have VS code, so you have your extension recommendations, um, how it's gonna launch the local host when you wanna debug it, settings, so you know language runtime, project runtime, um, virtual environment, so on and so on. So this is where, again, you can specify 
different information. And then additionally, you can see here, you can also specify your Python.Python .python path. So this is saying it's gonna be in the virtual environment. Um, task, so every time you start up your function, there's a bunch of tasks that have to take place. Well, I would say a bunch, but uh, one of them is if you're using Python, you need to install the dependencies in your requirement file. So that's something that we have to do. And then additionally, you need to make sure that you have your virtual environment. And then uh, this is just all the different scripts, libraries. So if you're gonna be using a library inside of the function, you need to make sure it's installed in your virtual environment. So right now you can see there's a few, but not a ton. And then additionally, uh, something that's very, very important <laughs> is again, it needs to be making sure that you're pointing to a 64-bit version. So if you're not pointing to a 64-bit version, what's gonna happen is it's gonna boot up, it's gonna start running, and then literally the second it starts to run, it's gonna say, wait a minute, this function runtime isn't configured right. It's basically telling you that you're using the 32-bit version. And so you have to make sure you're pointing to a 64-bit version of your Azure functions, just like here. Um, and then, Additionally, just be careful when you move your folder. So I've done this before where I've moved a project from one folder to the next. You just have to make sure that your virtual environment is configured correctly so that way it's pointing to the right, um, the right location. And so a lot of times that will break functions as well. You start moving stuff and all of a sudden you didn't think nothing bad was gonna happen. All of a sudden your functions don't work. So just be aware of that. So that's really kind of the big file structure. I think the last thing we'll do is we'll do the requirements. And then from here, uh, we will jump into our next video. So, you, so we will um, just install our stuff, call it quits, and then we'll go on to the next video. So we're gonna be using a lot of different services. So one's gonna be for uh, Key Vault, <laughs> one's gonna be for the identity, um, one's just going to be leveraging authentication stuff and blob storage. So uh, these are the packages that you more than likely are going to need. I'm not going to say you're going to need necessarily all of them, but uh, generally these tend to be the, the common packages I use across projects. So um, again, I would recommend that you can just take this once I post it on GitHub, but this is what you would need at least to run this particular project. And then you're going to also need requests because we're going to be making requests to get the content from the RSS feed. So just be aware of that. So first things first, I'm going to do control J to bring up my terminal. I want to make sure that I'm in my virtual environment. Very important that you note that. And then I'm going to do pip install hyphen R. So this is short for requirements. And then you're going to do requirements.txt. It's going to go through everything. Uh, more than likely, you're going to be prompted to update your PIP uh, as well. If it doesn't, great. If it does, you can update it or you don't have to update it. I haven't had any issues if I didn't update it, but I'm a little bit picky and I just like making sure things are up to date. <laughs> so you can see there's quite a few that have to be uh, installed. So don't be surprised if you're seating for you know like a minute or two. It's just making sure. Okay, and so you can see here too, it's also prompting us to um, upgrade pip. So I'm gonna do pi hyphen m uh, pip install hyphen hyphen upgrade pip. I'll do that as well. Great. And it's almost done. Woo! Okay, great. So at this point, I will be cutting off the video. So if you have any questions about just the overall setup of the project, or if you just have general questions about Azure functions and the timer-based ones, uh, feel free to put those down in the comments below. Otherwise, in our next video, we are gonna start writing the code to go and parse those RSS feeds, and then having the function take the content, put it into a blob storage, and stuff like that. So thank you again for watching, everybody. We will see you in video number two.